we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, um, I'm I'm officially like pumping water out of my backyard, which that sounds fun. Is <laughs> I've had so much issues with my backyard and it not draining and blah 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 and crap that no one cares about but me. And I, and I rigged up this whole system. And then today I I'm moving water all the way from my backyard to the front of the yard and down the driveway and out into the street where it's officially the city of Columbus's problem. Boom. Adulting. Adulting <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> oh, adulting and, and a little bit of rednecking. Cause a little bit. None of the things I used to achieve this were designed for this purpose. <laughs> it's I a little bit of a it. contraption. It's a little bit of a contraption. All right, let's let's go ahead and jump right into it here, Jared. Uh, so, so Friday, 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 Friday? maybe Friday. I forget. Thursday Which is or Friday. yesterday for Which... us, but several days ago for most people <laughs> listening to this. Uh, some of the um, Ohio State coaches got to talk to the media for the post-spring media press conference. I got to talk to a bunch of the coaches here, and we're going to go over some of the quotes there and give our give our opinions and thoughts about it. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah. Um, before I think, how before we get into that, um, we probably need to talk about Mitchell Melton out for the season. Um, we saw him go down no contact during the spring game and you see a guy go down no contact grab his knee yeah we've all been watching football we all we've all been watching football long enough to know that that's that's no good that's no good um so uh we got the official news last week this week for us last week for most of you uh that he's done for the season um which, you know, again, we, we were just kind of, we were just kind of waiting on that. Mm -hmm. The other thing, uh, even worse news, Marcus Crowley set to medically retire. He suffered um, a, another major injury this off season. And uh, that's, I think his third in a row. Um, that's, that's no go. That's, that's no good. Um, it, it sucks. It's terrible. Um, not, yeah, it's, uh, the kid's career ended before it could ever get started. And if you it ever sucks. find yourself wondering, Hey, should these kids get NL NIL money? Yes. Yes, they should. Um, you know, medically retires, he'll still get a chance to, uh, finish his education, get a degree, do all that stuff. Um, you know, in in the light of like, and not, and we're not going to get into it today, but if you haven't like read Tony Gerdeman's reaction to, or just even seen the video of the Ryan day, um, and, uh, Harry Miller interview that was done on the local television stations this week. Um, I highly recommend everyone checking checking out those things. Um, <laughs> carries for Chip Trainum in garbage time. Uh, no, probably not. Uh, they they are getting um, they are getting an additional running back this this fall. Uh, uh, why am I blanking on his? Oh yeah, Dallas Hayden. Thank you. Uh, yep getting Dallas Hayden. So that'll be four running backs. Um, and I really don't even expect Dallas Hayden to get maybe any carries. They have three incredibly talented running backs who are all, um, just dying for carries. Well, and, 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 and that's something too, Jared, to think about. That's it. There, there's yep. only, there's only three run scholarship running backs yep. on this team. Could that be an could that be an issue this year? Probably not, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Just like quarterbacks, only three um, scholar scholarship quarterbacks on this team. 
Well, it's it'll be four by the time the season actually starts. Yeah. Again, yes, you're, 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 yes England. Yeah, they're they're all studs, and I think they all you put them in, and I think they'll excel in in any play that they'll do. But you never know with injuries and all that too. Just something to keep an eye out. Absolutely. All right, Kyle. Let's get into the quotes. Um, where you want to start? Uh, let's start with, uh, Cade Stover was a running back in high school. Stop trying to give him his fifth job, Stuart. <laughs> uh, let's, let's start with Brian Hartline. Let's start with Brian Hartline. He's one of the main focuses, uh, especially, especially in the past month here with, with a lot of his wide receivers he's coached going on to the NFL here. So, uh, let's. Let's start off here. So they start off talking, um, asking Brian Hartline about how he, how they identify talent. And he says that we pride ourselves more on not necessarily finding the guys or finding the best guys, finding the right guys. And, and that, that's always been a thing about, I think, a lot of coaches in the past 15 years, even, even, even way back to, um, to Trussell, too. Just maybe never got the best guys, but always find the the right guys to put in to put into his team. Yeah, I mean it's it's not about star chasing. Um, we've seen uh, what it, one of the and not not that all the guys are in yet. And for for Pete's sake, it's not they haven't even gone through their fall camp yet. But one of the worst ranked wide receivers on the team from this rookie class is the one that's getting a lot of the preseason praise. Uh, and, you know, oh, by the way, Chris Olave was one of the worst rated wide receivers to commit to Ohio State in recent years. Like, you don't got a star chase. And so yeah. I always get a little bit worried when people put recruiting matters. Don't I'm not. Here's the thing. Sometimes people get recruiting matters and stars matter, and they wrap those two things into the same conversation. They aren't the same conversation. Recruiting 100% matters. Stars are an imperfect science. <clears throat> All right, and moving on to Ohio State, where a lot of, a lot of media, a lot of fans labeled Ohio State as WRU, which it's hard to yeah, yeah. not argue that. Uh, <laughs> uh, he says that I, you, you guys can talk all about that, but that's just something that we don't talk about and talks about um, Ohio State's track record in the NFL draft. And I think this quote here, Jared, we were talking about this a little bit here. I think this this just needs to be postered somewhere in um, at, at Ohio State there. Uh, he says here, a lot of people can talk about it, talk about what we could do with a player like you. We just do it. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the, the truth is there in black and white. Um, as far as calling Ohio State wide receiver, you, I, I, uh, it feels very recency bias. It feels very recency bias because Ohio State was having trouble consistently putting wide receivers in the league and having them have a lot of success like pre do we draw the line maybe at Michael Thomas mm -mm. go back further go oh back. no you know, I said a gap I said a gap I understand if you go back even further but like what, what how far do we have to go back like Michael Jenkins um because there absolutely were amazing stretches of Ohio, of Ohio state wide receivers, but I'm talking again, like consistency. <sighs> Robisk, uh, you know, Robisky didn't, was not an impactful NFL player. Um, I'm just saying there's a bit of a gap there. And I think Ohio state absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sansenbacher really lit up the NFL. <laughs> Don't don't put me in a position to, to shit talk Ohio State players, guys. Come on, not not specific players anyway. But yeah, it just it feels like there was a bit of a drought there for a while. 
I feel like it went like from Michael Jenkins to Michael Thomas. And I'm not saying that no one had success in the NFL in between that time, but it felt very few and far between. Um, but it certainly turned around Terry McLaurin, Michael Thomas, Terry McLaurin, um, you know, and now we have these draft picks like it's obviously has turned around. Yeah. Paris Campbell. Um, it's absolutely turned around, but it's, it's turned around recently. I don't know. So, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I understand what you're saying, though, but. I mean, Ohio State the, wide receivers to enter the league between Michael Jenkins and Michael Thomas. Do, do you have a list? Mm hmm. I do. I do. Santonio Holmes would be a good. Was, mm -hmm. was Santonio Holmes pre Michael Jenkins, though? Wasn't he at least about in that same era? Uh, let me find Michael Jenkins. He was drafted. In 2004. See, so so after 2004, Santonio Holmes, okay. Anthony Gonzalez. Okay. So I probably should have drawn the line at Santonio yeah. Holmes and not Michael Jenkins. <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm just going down the list here. Uh, Ted Ginn, Roy Hall, uh, Rubisky, um, Posey, uh, Devin Smith, who was almost a first-round pick, by the way. Then Michael yeah, and, and Devin Smith, Devin Smith not making it in the NFL was was injury issues. So zero, I, he he absolutely could have and should have been an impactful NFL player. Uh, back to back, I think they were knee issues. Uh, it just it didn't it didn't work out for him for for unfortunate reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just some knee injuries. Yeah, it just that just sucks. Which I think okay. now he's he is technically a free agent if he wants to go somewhere. Technically. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm moving on to um, uh, other wide receivers here. So he said on the wide receiver group that he has, he said that we have six or seven guys I think that are doing a great job. Mentions uh, Cam Bob and Jane Ballard among standouts. Uh also, also, um, they asked him about Jamison Williams going number twelve in the NFL draft. He says that he's he can't be more happy for him and his family as well. But, I mean that that just tells you. I mean, there's a lot of. I think I think most uh, people who really sit back and look at what James Jamison Williams did, I don't think there was any hard feelings or anything like that, and still supported each other. Jamison Williams supported uh, state, Ohio State players and coaches, and a, yeah. a lot, of, a lot of the fan base supported Jamison Williams as well. It was it was really just like Alabama and SEC fans who tried to create something there. Um, yep. It's it's well documented. You don't need me to tell you this, but like during an Alabama off week, he literally came to Ohio state and watched a game from the sidelines sidelines or maybe at least like double a deck. I forget, but yeah, like, yep. There's no love loss there. What's it's, it's yeah. No. All right. Uh, probably one of the uh, most interesting coaches this year, Jim Knowles being the defensive coordinator this year, uh, a lot, a lot to, a lot that he needs to work on compared to what the defense has been the past couple of years. Um, so I'm going to read a few quotes here. Uh, Jim Nose was asked about the, on the, the progress installing a new system on the defense uh, says they were able to, they, the defense were able to learn that we are able to do a lot of things. We have a system put in place so we can adjust when we need to adjust. And, and that and that's the big thing is is that part too. What we saw the past couple of years, it just seemed to be, hey, here's very vanilla defense, and we're going to stick to this, and yeah. just we we saw what it was the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. It you haven't experienced defense. I mean, we've 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 hashed and rehashed this. 
you have an experienced defensive coordinator in place now who knows how to call, adjust, implement a defense. He just has a level of experience that no one at Ohio State has had for a while. That's it. That, that, those are my thoughts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, I just, I, I just didn't feel, I just didn't feel the need to like have that conversation again. Yeah. Yep. No, that's fine. We, we can move on here. Um, he did briefly talk about Mitchell Milton saying it's going to be tough for him to get ready to go in the fall. Um, Urban Meyer, or, or, ooh, 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 wow. <laughs> Coach Day. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, Coach Day um, later, later said that he was going to be out for the, uh, out for the season. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, someone asked him about first impression on Ohio State wide receiver coach um, Hartline. And you know what he said? What did he say? Heart, Hartline is a snappy dresser. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what else I like about Knowles? He's very good at the press conference. He is. Makes me, he makes is. me scared that, like, I feel like because he's very gray. I feel, I feel like, and this is, man, I don't mean this to be an insult. It's going to come across that way. I think people think he's older than he is. Well, like, I think there are some people who kind of want to peg him as like a career defensive coordinator. Like maybe he's quote unquote too old to leave and become a head coach somewhere. He's not. Yeah. And the fact that he's as good at the press conference as he is scares me. (laughs) Well, here's here's another here's a kind of another joke that he had too about about finally kept being able to come to Ohio State. He said um, when talking to players, say saying it took you 15 to 16 years to get here. It only took me 56 years to get here. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know, like it's not totally ridiculous that the guy. I don't know. I would a big program. This is just, I'm not even talking specifically about Knowles at this point. Does a big program hire a first time head coach at the age of like 58? I think that's just an interesting question that I don't necessarily have an answer for. That's it. That's, that's, that's the thought. All right. Um, and then talking about a few, few players here, uh, was asked about Kane Curry. He said that he would, has a quick not first, 58 gangland yeah um that curry has a quick first step and surly um attitude gives him potential for greatness and also speaking of greatness um about sawyer and and uh toy malau said these guys are these got these are guys that have no limitations um it's, later goes on saying that both of them can do everything which no surprise here. Nothing, None. nothing new there. No. Um, I was having a conversation with someone in real life. Um, a thing I brought up. Yes, Stuart. <laughs> Bad Stuart. <laughs> um, the, uh, one of the things, one of the things I'll, uh, I, I brought up to someone talking in real life. What is a what is something that Ohio State national title teams largely have in common? And the answer to that question to me is a strong sophomore class. And you know, we can absolutely start with Sawyer and JTT. Um a good defensive front. Well, that's also I mean like I said, we can start with Sawyer and JTT. Mm-hmm. Then you can add Mike Hall and and Ty Leak to that conversation that was, as well. Like the sophomore that's... defensive linemen are insane. And then that's... of course, at that point, we're not we haven't even brought up the offense yet, right? Like I was gonna say I was gonna say a a stellar uh leadership group. I well, I think that I think that's a given, right? Um but I think the sophomore thing is interesting to me. Because like yes. you jump over the offensive side, you have an insane crop of wide receivers. Uh, you could easily say, you know, led by Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, obviously Henderson, like I kind of think maybe we forget that he's a true sophomore because of how much he played last year. Um, 
there's some really good sophomore defensive backs, uh, as Stewart points out. Um, you know, specifically, you know, in the cornerback, uh, in the cover safety area, some really strong sophomores there. Um, Ohio State has an amazing sophomore class, which I, I think is, I think a key. I think it's a, I think it's a big key. Burke, Hancock, and Johnson. Absolutely. Stuart. Absolutely. I mean, again, Burke is a guy who you might forget is only a second year player. Hancock and Johnson. Hey, you know what? You said it, not me. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, special teams coach Parker Fleming. Did you know that we had a special teams coach, <laughs> Jared? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> uh, one, one of the things that was really talked about was... I think I've uh, complained about it in the past. <laughs> uh, one, one of the things a lot of people were talking about what, in the springtime what, was about uh, Noel Ruggles. Noel Ruggles wasn't yeah. there in the spring. What was happening was going on. Um, Parker kind of just answered all of those questions and said that he will be with the team in the fall. Um, later on, Ryan Day did say that he just needed some time off, but will return to the team. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what that's about per se, but like he's a kicker. He, he shows up and he kicks the football. <laughs> I think gangland said it before I did. He's a kicker. It's fine. Uh, anyone who, who here, who here played football for a very small high school? Um, our kicker literally just showed up on Friday and kicked in the game because he, he was practicing with the soccer team the rest of the week. And then on Saturday, he showed up, or excuse me, on Friday nights, he just showed up and kicked. It's fine. Unless, He's unless, a kicker. You, have a, unless you have a really, really small school where you didn't have a soccer team. Listen, we had a soccer team and literally every old person in town complained about it because it <laughs> took talent away from the football team. And that's yeah, why we yeah, couldn't yeah. compete with our rivals because they yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah. a soccer team because our rivals didn't have a soccer team because we had a soccer team. That was their excuse for why we weren't more uh, active in the in the rivalry. That's lame. That's lame. That's a lame excuse. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, one other thing um, was asked about Parker. Parker Fleming uh, about the return game. I know that we we hear at the Sweep Cast with our Sweep Cats uh, talk talk a lot about the return game and when will we finally get that touchdown? Uh, on the return game, uh, Coach Fleming says that we do have some guys that can rotate. Um, mentions uh, Cameron Martinez is quote definitely in the mix and has caught some balls in the spring end quote. So add in Cameron Martinez into that list of potential returners. Yeah, there's just there's a lot of offensive talent that like can't quite get on the field yet. Uh, prior, uh, a bunch of wide receivers that are even too many to name. So it's real easy to like focus on all of them for the return game. But as it turns out, there's some real talented guys on the defensive side too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, one thing from Tony Alford. Well, two things he talked about before day gave the news about Marcus Crowley he said that he suffered another serious injury. Um, and then day later said that he's medically retired. Uh, Tony, Tony offered also jokingly about Trayvon Trevion Henderson, uh, <laughs> saying that Henderson needs to give me more money. He's, he's making more money than I am now. Yeah. The only one tell you that Ohio state's like falling behind in, in NIL. Those are those are naysayers who are trying to drum up drama. Yeah. Yes, that's and, ex yeah, it, I'm talking about who you exactly think I'm talking about. <laughs> and then about uh, the last quotes here about recruiting and the transfer portal. So uh, Justin Fry on recruiting. So Justin Fry getting um, used to about used used to Ohio State recruiting and saying recruiting never stops at Ohio State. It's like brushing your teeth. It's just yeah. normal. It's just normal. Wake and up, the, recruit. After lunch, recruit. Before bed, recruit. Exactly. And then 
Brian Day on the transfer portal uh, says that they don't spend a lot of time focusing on the transfer portal. If if the fit's right, we'll do it. But we're going to focus on the guys on our team first. Uh, said he would rather focus on developing the high school talent he has recruited to Ohio State. But but still, focus. But you know, doesn't focus a lot on the transfer portal. But that you know, you, you still you still got to look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you still got to look. Um, yep. You know, I, guys shouldn't be gifted starting spots just because they've been there a while. If if they aren't performing and like this is this is big boy college football. This is big boy college football. Sorry, and if you're not performing, you'll be replaced. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's and those are the, facts. And then the last thing, Jared, the new turf is being installed as we are speaking. Yay! Well, probably not as we're speaking. Well, Prob- maybe as people are listening. In prog- to this. It's in progress. <laughs> it's- we're we're recording this somewhat on a uh, somewhat late on a Saturday night, Kyle. And they're probably not working on the turf right now. It's it's in progress. <laughs> it's in progress. So so those are the major quotes here that um I was able to gather up here. Uh nothing nothing too extraordinary other than just some some disappointing injury, inju- news. injury yeah. new, some injury news, uh some some memorable quotes from some some coaches here, but yeah, it's 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 their it's their post spring uh, press conference, so not going to get too much out of them. Yeah, um, and just again, like it was one of those things where it's like it either has to be briefly mentioned or you have to dedicate an episode to it. But I'm just going to plug it again. Like, we don't have a sponsor on this episode, so let this episode of the Sloopcast be sponsored by Ryan Day and Harry Miller's interview. Um, I, th- I think it was with 10TV. Um, maybe it was with ABC6. I forget. It's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but go watch it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, I mean, one of the things, like, on our Discord server, which, by the way, come join our Discord server, that we really, like, emphasize is like not shit talking players. We it's a rule we enforce on our Discord server. You're not allowed to shit talk players. You can criticize. Some people don't understand that there's a difference between criticizing and being a belligerent asshole. There 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 are <laughs> there's constructive criticism and there's being an asshole. And 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 I I bring all of this up around Harry Miller just to say that these are kids. And like be nice. Like you should be nice, literally like be nice there. Like even the professional athletes, you should be nice to them or at least not be an asshole to them because they are humans. And like, I, I will in the little tiny corner of the internet that I have influence on, I will enforce that. Uh, so yeah, just go, go watch the Harry Miller interview and uh, say nothing. Yep. All right, Kyle. Um, we have a second episode to record here. Um, so I think we're going to get going on that. Uh, if uh, guys are episodes coming out, this is coming out on Monday on Tuesday, we're going to take a quick peek at the 2024 recruiting class. So uh, tune in for that. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Typically I would talk about hey, the awesome. crew. <laughs> The, the I typically talk about the crew and they are currently playing as we I'm speak. good. Yes, and yes, they, they are, are. And they are up one nothing. So hopefully they can maintain that lead. Yes, they did score. Yes, they are on a scoring streak. <laughs> Let's call it that. It is a streak. It's it's more than one game. Sure. <laughs> I mean, te- <laughs> Kyle, you're technically correct. I am technically right. That is it. That is it. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? No, you just said that was it. Uh, so tonight's ending music will be brought to you by, uh, he is out of Cincinnati. Uh, originally anyway, his name is St. Lennox, uh, singer songwriter guy out of Cincinnati. So, uh, come check that or, you know, Man, I just totally just went. 
right there. My, my mind turned off. If you are uh, listening to the audio version of this, all you have to do is nothing. And if you are uh, watching the YouTube version of this, there's a link down in the show notes that will take you to the song. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer. Local beer. Listen to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is St. Lennox. Thank you.